What's going on everybody and welcome to part three of our tensorflow.js tutorial series. In this video and the next video, we're gonna be talking about incorporating tensorflow.js into a much more complex application. So we saw like a really basic application of doing linear regression and doing like a best fit line to some input data, but this is a pretty boring application. So now what we're gonna do is something a little more exciting and that's gonna be uh, having an AI play Pong uh, against you. Before we get into it, I just want to give a quick shout out and thanks to the channel's two most recent sponsors, Leonard M and The Golden Square. Thank you guys so much for your support. You're awesome. Okay, so uh, first of all, as I've been saying like a million times, I am not a JavaScript programmer. So um, I knew what I wanted to do was uh, do Pong, but I, I couldn't code Pong in JavaScript probably to to save my life. So I use the following, I put a link, um, you shouldn't need it, all the code I have in my uh, text-based write-up basically because we've modified it pretty significantly. Um, but this is the original code and if you wanna learn like how to actually make it, I would go here. Um, the link is in the text-based version of the tutorial though if you wanna check it out. Um, and uh, coming on down here, basically at the end of the day, this is this is what you wind up with, some sort of Pong. Actually, that's not quite it. I think they have a JS Fiddle, yeah, uh, where you can actually like play Pong over here. So you move the paddle back and forth, and then the computer, this is like the computer, and then this is the player here, and you can play Pong with it. So anyways, what I wanted to do is take this code and adapt it to use TensorFlow.js to play Pong. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way now and we're gonna get into it. Also, um, you will definitely want to head to the text-based version of this tutorial, part three. There's gonna be a significant amount of copy pasta because what I just don't see the point of us like writing this stuff out. And then also writing out a lot of the code that's coming from the Pong game um, tutorial. I, I, the whole point is adapting JavaScript code to to include JavaScript, so this is definitely not a JavaScript tutorial. I'm, I'm just not someone who, who should be teaching JavaScript, so, so anyway, uh, yeah. So first we're going to start off with just a ponggame.html, so I'm just going to do new, call this uh, ponggame.html, cool, open that up, and zoom in on in. And here we go. So all we're going to have in here is the following. So you've got your main content div. We're bringing in tensorflow.js. And then finally, um, we're loading this pong game.js. And that's where basically all our code is going to go. So before we do that, um, we probably should understand like what what would be how how would we even do this like how would we train an AI to play Pong in the first place like, what kind of model are we going to use so my plan is to basically uh, feed into the like the, our features for the network are just going to be like where is what's the the ball's location what's the your paddle location what's the enemy's paddle location and then like all the previous things of those so the, what's the previous location of the ball previous location of the paddle previous location of um, the enemy basically so um, yeah so now what we're gonna do is go um, I guess we're gonna make another let's make another um, and we're gonna call this one pong what did we call this? I think it's like ponggame.js, yeah. Ponggame.js, yes. And then we'll open that again in Sublime. And then we're just gonna start going through it. And again, I'm just gonna be copying and pasting this and just kind of running through the text-based version of the tutorial. So first is just our model. Uh, this actually isn't the final model I end up going with, but this will do for now. So we're just defining the model that we, that we wanna use. So again, um, here are the input shape that we're defining. And in fact, why does it, this actually came through. And <laughs> I don't even want to mention that. Okay, I'm just going to delete that for now. Um, okay, two, 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 two. Yeah, for so, for, so for some reason, this still works. <laughs> and I have no idea why. Why would the input shape, unless it like slices it or something, which would be nuts. Anyway, this actually works, but I'm going to delete that. Uh, and go with this, which is better. I can't believe that made it through. Um, that really confused me initially. I, I have no idea why that works, but it actually does. So again, um, 
the the eight inputs, um, not in this specific order necessarily, but where is the player's paddle? Where is the computer paddle? What's the ball X, ball Y, previous ball X, previous ball Y, previous paddle X, previous paddle Y. Um, so those are all the things. Now the next major chunk of code here is all um, original from the Pong code kind of tutorial that I'm linking to anyways. So I'm just gonna paste all of that in. So again, you'll have to go to the text-based version of the tutorial because we're not going through all that. Um, the next thing is uh, now we've got some custom code um, because, um, let me just paste it in. So so this, this is for the actual um, thing to move. So when you're playing this version that is from the tutorial, the computer player that we're going to replace with an AI, um, the way it moves is by following the ball. It just follows the ball around and like that's it. So it's not like the greatest AI in the world, um, but it's, it's somewhat challenging to defeat, but it's actually pretty simple um, once you learn the simple way to defeat it. Now, um, because we're not always going to be using the computer, we need a way to update the paddle for our AI. So actually our AI's logic is much, much simpler. So our, our neural network model is gonna return basically the move. So we feed in um, here, we feed in those eight features, pass it through the you know all these beautiful hidden layers, and the output is three units. And it's gonna be a one hot output. So the output is gonna be something like one zero zero. Um, it could be you know zero one zero or it could be zero, zero, one. And this just corresponds to like move left, move, uh, don't move at all, hold still, and then move right. And then what we're gonna do is apply an argmax to this. So then you're gonna say probably like tf.argmax, for example, I think it's camel cased, I forget. We'll get there in a second. Anyway, and in this case, the argmax would be zero, one, two, right? So two. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract one, no matter what, no matter what the output is, we subtract one. So in this case, the argmax would be zero, we subtract one. So subtracting one, assuming it was this one, that answer would be one. So one is the move that's gonna get passed uh, to this function here. So one, and then we're gonna move that paddle four times, whatever that move is. So in this case, zero, one, argmax is one, minus one is zero, times four, still zero. And then in this case, it was zero, minus one, negative one, times four, minus four. So either it moves four pixels left, right, or nothing at all. Okay, so that's basically the moving logic. Now the next bit, uh, next batch of code is I almost mixed bit and batch and said a wordy dirt. <laughs> Now, uh, yeah, so the next batch of code is um, just from the, or, you know, the Pong game tutorial, so I'm not really gonna talk about that. Copy, pasta. Okay, this is just some custom code to start collecting data for the AI. Also, I guess there's a bunch of like this stuff here. If you're not a, a JavaScript programmer like me, this is seems to be very very similar to self in Python, where it's like just this like abstract object. Um, the only real difference between this and self that I've noticed is it works in functions. <laughs> so, so it's just like this um, overarching object, I guess. Anyways, um, moving on. Someone can post below a much better description, I'm sure. Otherwise, you can like Wikipedia or Stack Overflow. Um, I think there's probably some Quora stuff too for you know this for self or just what is this. Um, yeah. Okay, now we have some code for that's a little more custom. And all we're doing here is um, uh, this basically is just saving data per frame. So at the end of the day, what do we need to train a model? We need training data, so we have to collect that data. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to play against the computer for n games. We're going to decide however many games we want to play. So for n games, we're going to play against the computer player. And then after that, we're going to take all the training data, hopefully balance the training data, and then train the computer player to be an AI, a deep learning AI, uh, to play against us. So um, in order to do that, the other thing that we need to do is we, basically the computer player is going to learn based on what we do. Uh, so in order to make that applicable to the computer, we have to like flip the table. Um, so that's what's going on here. Um, speaking of which, I didn't mention it before, uh, uh, big thanks to Daniel Kukiela for uh, 
for helping with this JavaScript code. He's actually the one that wrote most of the the JavaScript here. Because uh, if I didn't mention it, I'm not a JavaScript programmer. Although neither is he, I don't think. Anyways, um, so there's probably errors here. And uh, we apologize profusely. So um, now what we want to do is... Um, we need to switch, like I was saying before, after playing so many games, we want to switch to that AI player. So that's what this is doing. So basically every time um, every time a score is made, we need to start a new turn. And then in this case, if the turn is greater than two. So after two whole games, we're going to train an AI. You could change this because obviously two games is nowhere near enough games to actually train an AI to play against you. Um, Ten is getting there. I found some success after about 20 games. The AI was like starting to learn some stuff, um, but you're definitely gonna need some more stuff uh, to get here. Uh, the other option, I, I just think it's unreasonable to expect players to play against this boring computer for 20 games um, just to play against the AI. So what's the more likely scenario is later on, we'll load a model that's already pre-trained and then you just do transfer learning. Um, and that makes a big difference. So anyways, I'm going to stick with one just so we can get through this in the tutorial in a timely manner. So after every two games, uh, we're going to just clear out the data so it doesn't get super bloated. Um, you either could do this or you, you don't necessarily have to. That way, every time you train, you're training with all of the data. That's just an example for if you did want to clear out the data, there's a nice little function for you to do that. Um, now we actually would after those two games and after we, we actually want to train, we need to actually train. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and train and then all this is doing is it's splitting up the data, pushing it to our X's and our Y's, um, defining the X's and Y's as tensors, and then we train the model uh, right here. Okay, so um, once we've done that, uh, let me come down. Shoot, I got lost. <laughs> yes, okay. So um, then we need to be able to actually make the predictions themselves. So let me paste that in. Um, and again, do it very similar to what we had before. As long as we actually have training data to make a prediction, uh, we make the prediction. And then again, it's just the argmax. Grab that data via data sync minus one, like I was talking about before. And then and then that get pa gets passed to the move function, multiplied by four, and that's how many pixels we end up moving. Okay, and then the last bit of code is just the Pong, um, just from Pong itself. So, uh, let's go ahead and test this real quick. I'll just open with uh, Chrome, pull it over. All right, so now let's open up console just in case we do hit some sort of error. And well, I'm actually moving, let me do this. Okay, so here's how you beat the computer player. All you need to do is get it to hit to the side as quickly as possible. Um, there we go, that should probably defeat him, yeah. So now we just need one more defeat. Uh, and then we should see it train and then see how it does. Again, it's only two games. It's probably not going to do very well at all. Um, it just really shouldn't. It's just nowhere near enough data. Okay, that should be a score. Okay, so now our AI is live. It's making all its predictions. Oh, he did his best. <laughs> Just keep in mind, wow, he tried again. I should have, I should have made it a little more easy on him, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's pretty dumb. So um, one thing we could do is maybe not clear out the data every time because now he's just training on new data. But he does already have, like, weights, you know, so it's really... It's all, it sort of retains that data in memory, just not very well. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, there we have an AI actually playing. Again, if you do it for about 20 games or so, it, it will be a little better. Um, but obviously, I, I just that's not acceptable. People aren't actually going to play Pong for 20 games to make the AI. Whoa! <laughs> this is reminiscent of the, uh, the robot arm playing... Um, playing air hockey. Well, suddenly he actually has moved and, and hits things. I got him here, though, for sure. See ya. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. 
So what we want to do to improve the model is somehow at least start with a slightly trained model. So in the in the next tutorial, we're actually going to cover a bunch of stuff. It's probably going to be super long. Um, but basically, we're going to cover bulk training this model. Uh, so we're just going to have something that just automatically like plays the game a bunch by itself, just two computers against each other, to compile a bunch of data, taking that bunch of data, not training it in TensorFlow.js, because TensorFlow.js is slow. So we're going to actually train it in Python with Keras, and then we're going to output that model, convert that model to TensorFlow.js format, and then load in that model, and then we'll play with that model and see how that model does. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. If you like this content, you can support it, pythonprogram.net slash support. Otherwise, I will see you in another tutorial.